Hello, Yawning Angel here again, back for another AMOS video. And in this one, we're going to use AMOS to read in data from a text file that we create under Workbench on the Amiga. So let's get on with it. But before I begin, some time ago, I did a video where I got AMOS to capture some data from the screen and write that out to a file. There's a link up here taking you back to that video if you, if you want to watch it again. So I was going to do a follow-up video where I got an AMOS program to then read that data back in from that file, but I thought that would be boring. So I've elected to do this video where I get AMOS to read data from a file that has been created outside of AMOS. So by creating a text file in Workbench, if we can get AMOS to read data in from that file, that has some real-world application sort of possibilities. So let's get on with it. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is create a text file um, using text edit uh, from Workbench. So in this text file, I'm going to enter a, a long string of text, which we're then going to create an AMOS program to read that string of text in and break it up into different words effectively. So this is fairly straightforward. So here we are on the screen. So I've opened up text edit and in here I'm going to type some text. So let's just zoom in a bit. Right, so here we are. So what I'm going to do is type in yawning angel retro. Whoop, retro. <laughs> so I haven't put any spaces in here at all. So these are the three words which I want the AMOS program we're about to write to pull out from this long string of text. So that's fairly straightforward. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters for yawning, one, two, three, four, five for angel, one, two, three, four, five for retro. So remember those numbers because we're going to be using them in the AMOS program. So the next thing to do now is just to save this and I need to save this into the folder where my AMOS program is going to be. So we will go to uh, save as and we'll put that in, let's go to volumes, so my work programming, AMOS Pro source, we'll put it in vlogs, and I'm going to call it uh, Q and D text. That'll do. Quick and dirty text. Right, so we'll save that. That's all saved, and now we'll fire up AMOS and write a program to read that string of text in. And here we are in Amos Professional. So let's start doing some code. Uh, so let's put some comments in. Open a new screen. And we're going to create our new screen. Those of you who have watched a number of these videos of mine know that I have a favorite screen preference. So screen open one. Uh, we'll have that at 600, 320. Uh, we'll have it by 16 colors, and I want a high-res screen. We'll set the paper to black. Um, pen should be orange, and we'll clear the screen. Three commands on one line there. You can have multiple instructions on one line in Amos and in most basic languages. Uh, right, so if I press F1 to run that, ta-da, okay. There's our screen set up. Brilliant. So now what we're going to do is um, let's make this code look tidy. So open uh, a file. So what we're going to do is read in that text file that we created earlier. So the we use the command open random because this is a random access file. Uh, for me as a programmer, random access files are a heck of a lot easier to use than um, just standard sequential files, just because you can access data randomly through them, hence the name. Um, so we're gonna be using a random access file. So this is on channel one, and we'll give it the file name, which was Q and D text. So that's the name of the file that AMOS is gonna look for. Don't forget, 
we're going to save this code in the same folder as that text file. Right, so that's opening the file. So the next line we're going to do is a bit of space here. Uh, and we're going to define the fields. So what we need to do now is tell Amos that when you go to that file, we want the data that you bring in from that file to be assigned to these specific fields. So we are going to do so field um, for channel one. First one is going to be seven. Uh, and we're going to call this first string dollar. Uh, the second one, we're going to have five as second string dollar. And the third one will also be five, five as third string dollar. So that's defining our field. So we know that yawning is seven characters, angel is five characters, and retro is five characters. So we should get those three words, each word assigned to those fields. Right, so onwards we go. And the next thing is now to get the actual record from the file. We need to tell Amos to go off and get that record. So we just use the command to get channel one and get the first record. It's as easy as that. 130 rim, 140. Uh, so now what we're going to do is print the uh, red data. Quite simple this. What we're going to do is print the first string dollar to there and 160 print second string dollar and 170 print third string oh no third string dollar and finally what we're going to do is close the file at the end of it. So the next thing to do will be to save this piece of code into the same folder as the actual text file. Right, so here I am. I'm in the vlogs folder for my Amos source code. So we're going to call this piece of code q and the text dot Amos. We're going to give it the Amos extension. Um, oh, Q and D text Amos. There we go. That's better. Right. So we'll save that now. That is saved. So if I now flick across to uh, my directory opus screen, and what we should see, right. So here I've got that's my text file, quick and dirty text. And that's my actual Amos code there. So they are in the same folder. Brilliant. So let's go back to Amos. Here we are. All good. Right. So if I press F1 now to run this, we should hopefully see three words appear on the screen that have been read from that text file. And there we go. Look at that. There it is. Yawning, angel, retro. Fantastic. So we've managed to bring those fields in from the file. But what I'm going to do now is mix things up a bit. And I'll show you how you can cut and splice those words just by changing the field definitions. Back in the code then. So let's uh, change this close file command to line 400. So let's do line 200 rem uh, change things up. And what we're going to do now is change the field definitions. But before we do that, let's put a little prompt on the screen. Let's change that to line 210. Uh, we're going to change pen will now become two. Uh, and then we'll do print changing things up. Just a little bit of a visual cue as to what's going on. And then we'll change the pen back again pen back to one. Okay, so now, <coughs> excuse me, so now what we're going to do is change those field definitions. So this is what I mean by that. So we'll have field, so channel one, the first one's now going to be five characters long. Uh, new first string dollar. 
the second one, we could have that as uh, four characters as new second string dollar. And we can have the last one as eight as new third string dollar. So whereas up here we had seven, five, and five, now we're going to have five, four, and eight. So let's see what this does. Uh, so now what I need to do is get the record again. So channel one and get the first record. And now we're going to print uh, new uh, first string dollar to whoops to fifty print new second string dollar to sixty print new third string dollar. Okay, looking good. I think let's just tidy this up a bit. I don't like uh, random spaces in code. Right, right, so now if I press F1, this should now show me the original three fields that we've loaded in, and their original definitions, and then we should have another three fields with the new definitions. Pressing F1, and there we go. We've got, if I go over here, we've got the first three words, yawning, angel, retro. We then change things up. So our first definition was five, so yawny, and then we had four characters, N-G-A-N, -N, and then we had the last eight characters there. So you can see how that has changed what we're actually, not what we're bringing in, but how we're displaying what we're bringing in. So this is what the beauty of this is. We can read in a string and we can splice it up and display it however we like. So also a cautionary tale here is that you need to have these definitions correct if the data you're trying to display, you need displayed in a specific way. So a little bit of trial and error sometimes, but play around with it, it can be a lot of fun. But at the end of the day, we've proved that Amos can read a text file that has been created in Workbench and display that data to the screen quite easily. Great fun, really happy with that. And that's it for this video. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please do the usual, like and subscribe. Uh, there's a link up here to some previous Amos videos that I've done. Give them a look if you uh, like doing a bit of coding in Amos. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you're able to. So all that's left for me to say now is thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.